You are God. Right? Uh, <laughs> awesome. She said, yes. How awesome is that? Right? You are God. The problem is some of you think you're all of God. Right? <laughs> You're uniquely God, and the people around you are not God, right? That's the big mistake that religions make with mystics. Mystics are speaking in this universal, and religions knock it down to the parochial. You know, when Jesus says, I and the Father are one, it doesn't say, maybe he said it, but no one wrote it down, and so are you. <laughs> no, erase that one, we don't like that. But that's the message, you are it. Tat tvam asi in Sanskrit. You are that. You are the, 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 the ultimate reality. Happening is you. <clears throat> Just like the way every wave of the ocean is the ocean. It's just not all of the ocean. And if you took all the waves and you added them up, they wouldn't even add up to the sum total of the ocean. The ocean is greater. It's, this is called panentheism. Right, there are five ways to think about God. There's theism, atheism, agnosticism, pantheism, and panentheism. I know there's five because I only have five fingers. <laughs> Theists believe that God is separate from them. None of them are wrong, except four of them. <laughs> Theists believe that, that God is separate from them. God is, is outside, supernatural. Controls the world, creates the world, decides whether you go to heaven or hell. Right? You decide you went to limbo, but then someone decided there is no limbo. It really screwed up cruise ship gaming. Because <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't do limbo. Because it's not the, okay, we're going to meet at 2 o'clock for purgatory. No, it doesn't work. It's, limbo is better. But anyway, that's a theist. The one closest to the theist is the atheist. Right, we think it's theist versus atheist, but actually the atheist and the theist agree on what God is. They disagree as to whether God is, but they agree that God is a supernatural guy, it's usually a guy, supernatural guy in the sky who created everything, runs everything, decides what's going to happen to you, and like George Carlin says, always needs money. <laughs> But they agree. An agnostic also agrees. God is supernatural being on you, know, creates the world, judges you, monitors you to heaven and hell and all that junk. That's what, and they don't know if God exists. So either you affirm that supernatural God, you deny the supernatural God, or you say you don't know the supernatural God. Theists are being honest. Atheists are being honest. I think agnostics are being dishonest because if they really said, I don't know, they would belong to every religious tradition on the planet just in case one of them was right. Because <laughs> if you don't know, you know, maybe I should, I should pray to Jesus on Sunday and Hanuman on Tuesday and Krishna, I don't know what day Krishna gets prayed to, maybe it's all the time, I don't know. Yahweh, if you can say Yahweh, you're not supposed to say Yahweh, especially on Saturday. <laughs> but see, nothing happens. So. <laughs> Forgive him, Father, for he knows not what he does. <laughs> Except I do. <laughs> so, an agnostic wouldn't know, you know, would, would have to do everything. Instead, they basically act like atheists. I'm an agnostic, so I don't belong. I don't know. Well, if you really didn't know, you might want to join, just in case you're wrong. Right? I belong to lots of religions. I mean, I do Jewish stuff. I'm like, I'm like Mirabai. I, I do Jewish stuff. I do Catholic stuff. I do... Hindu and Buddhist stuff, I do Taoist stuff, I do Muslim stuff, I do all this kind of things, all these different things, on the off chance that one of them is actually right, you know? I mean, I just want to win. I just, I just want to win. I love the rapture. I love the rapture. I don't know how many of you are rapture Christians, but I love the rapture. And I love the fact that I'm not going to be raptured because I want to be there when everyone is lifted naked into heaven. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I knew it. That's how. But at the end, you know, I want to be on the winning team. So if Jesus comes back, I want to, you know, 
affirm that I love Jesus. If, if it's Allah or the, the Muslim, the 13th Imam comes back, I want to be able to say, la ilaha illallah, you know, and I, there's no, other, there's no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. I want to win. I want to win. If it's the Jewish God, I want to be you know, in that camp. I want to win. I, kept, I keep kosher on the off chance that that will get me into heaven. The fact is, nothing gets you into heaven because you're already here. The fact that you think you have to get into heaven is what makes this hell. Think about that. It's important. <laughs> so, atheist, agnost, uh, atheist, theist, atheist, agnostic. The fourth one is pantheist. Pantheism is very close to the truth. The truth is what I say, right? So <laughs> pantheist is very close to truth. Pan, it's, it's Greek, so pan means God, uh, uh, all, all, pan, everything. Theism is theos, everything, all, pan, is God. Pantheism, everything is God. Now, I think that's true. Your God, the chair you're sitting on is God. Everything is God and should be, should be treated that way. It's a holy being, wholly happening. The fifth one is panentheism, and that's really where I am. Pan, everything. The little en in the middle means in. Everything is in God. God is everything and greater than everything. That's like the ocean and the waves. The waves are in the ocean, but the ocean is greater than the waves. The best definition of God, I think, maybe, at this moment, in the Western tradition, is the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. Anybody? Only a Jew knows. Okay, so fine. <laughs> All right. Because a Jew wrote it, so a Jew knows it. St. Paul says, God is that in whom we live and move and have our being. That's what it is. That's what it is. Can't build a church on that, though, because it's already here. You can either wake up and get it or not, but you can't earn it. It's grace because it's already been given. So I'm a panentheist. This song was a panentheist song. Right? Everything is this aliveness. Uh, Chiyut or Chayut, depends on, on how you pronounce it. But everything is this same non-dual aliveness. If you really get that, and I, I say this with all due respect, there's no such thing as cultural appropriation. My God, there's a Bach festival on campus. I swear there were non-Germans going in. I'm wearing a Cuban shirt. I've never been to Cuba. I don't mean it was made in Cuba. I mean, it's a Cuban-style shirt. I listen to, to Paul Simon, where, where he takes music from different cultures and blends it with jazz and, and, and rock and pop and comes up with these amazing fusions. Just imagine if music had to follow some politically correct, absolutely narcissistic, totally, totally sicko, politically correct leftist nonsense that only you can play only your music and maybe you can't even listen to someone else's music. Who knows? If everything is God, everything is yours. And that's how you learn from stuff. I don't want to just be a Jew. 2,500 years ago, there's a guy in Greece named Diogenes. Diogenes said that it's not enough. Now, he, this is his language. It's not enough to be Oriental or Western. Now, we don't use those Oriental anymore, but that was 2,500 years ago. Time of the Buddha, right? It's not enough that you're Oriental, Eastern, or Western. You have to be both because they're yin and yang and they have to come together. It's not enough that you're just a Jew or just a Christian or just a Muslim or just a Hindu or, or just a, a Buddhist. It's not, it makes no sense because you're human and so is the Buddha and you can relate. You're human and so is Jesus and you can relate. You're human and so is Muhammad and you can relate. You can relate to all of these beings they are teaching you, not just some narrow group that comes out of their culture and their time. 
Panentheism, the radical awakening to the non-duality of God in, with, and as everything, that in whom we live and move and have our being, liberates us to love and to learn from everyone and everything. Amen. Not saying we shouldn't be homogenized. Right? I'm not, uh, what's the language that they can't try to come up with? It? Um, Esperanto. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, sounds like coffee to me, Esperanto. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not saying that. I don't want to homogenize things. I want there to be some people who are so devoted to their culture and their language that they can do creative things in it that I can't do. But I want to learn from that. And I want to be able to play that music. And I want to be able to sing those songs. And I want to be able to wear their clothes if they're cool and comfortable. And I don't want to be attacked for it, and I don't want to have to defend myself for it, and thank God Mirabai is all heart, and she could listen to those guys, and thank God it didn't happen with me, and thank God... <clears throat> I live in Tennessee. We're a Second Amendment state. <laughs> this is a Luger from Germany, but I got one. You know? I'm not a violent person most of the time, but those barriers, that, that's not what we're talking about. I don't want to go to church and, and hear something that isn't authentically Christian, but I don't think it's wrong to go to church, a synagogue or anything, and have something come into that environment that enriches my Christianity. Okay. That was not part of my talk. <laughs> <coughs> I just love Mirabai, and I just was so angry that I, I admire, I don't know where you are if she's even here, but I admire what you did, but I wanted to kill the guys who did it. <laughs> and they were guys. It, was, it, was, it wasn't about cultural appropriation. It was about male dominance. It was all about that. All right. 